Howdy folks. So this is just a follow up to the uh, initial review I did of this LCR T4 meter. Um, what I wanted to do was see exactly the waveforms that are coming out of this when it's initially determining what type of component is plugged in. So I got out my scope here and uh, I've got uh, channel 1 connected between um, pin 1 and pin 3 and channel 2 is on pin 2 there. Um, it really shouldn't matter the way that I've connected up the probing because, of course, this thing is designed to detect any component in any orientation. Uh, like you can plug in a transistor, base collector emitter, you know, in any way, for example. So um, it shouldn't matter. Um, and hopefully we can see that in the waveforms. Uh, it should cycle back and forth. So uh, I, I have been playing around a little bit um, before I turned the camera on. And I'm a little bit surprised at the waveforms that are coming out of this thing. Um, I thought that these would be uh, like low voltage signals originally, um, because of course, if this thing's testing uh, things like MOSFETs, um, you know, you could damage them if you put, um, you know, too high a voltage in the wrong direction or something like that, if maybe it, it doesn't have a, a protection diode or something like that. But this thing's actually putting out TTL signals, which I thought was a little unusual. Um, so what I'll do is, uh, it can detect the resistances of the, the 10 meg in the times 10 probes I've got connected right now. So if I just uh, wait for this trace, I'm currently on, uh, I have channel 1 and 2 on, 2 volts per division, 250 milliseconds. And if I press test, this is what we get. And uh, I'll do that again and I'll stop it. And uh, you probably can't see this because of the glare, but it has detected both uh, 10 mega ohm resistances. Um, so it can t t obviously test multiple resistances at once, which is quite nice to see. So I'll do that again and I'll stop it. So this is the basic test waveform. And I found that no matter what you plug in, um, you get the beginning of this waveform. And depending on the component that's plugged in, uh, it will stop at a certain point in this waveform and begin to do something else. So for example, if you plug a capacitor in parallel, uh, what it'll do is it'll get so far and then you can start to see the voltage ramp uh, in, in either you know negative or positive as it's obviously uh, charging it up to determine its capacitance value. Uh, obviously because there's nothing uh, more than a resistance plugged in, uh, it probably waits because the resistance is sort of the almost like a default, I guess. So it probably waits the longest before giving up and just saying it's just a plain resistance. And of course, I can't, I can't see what it actually does when there's nothing plugged in because, of course, um, the probes always have some resistance. So what I'll do is I'll plug in um, that same uh, 33 microfarad capacitor I tested with before, and uh, we can see what that looks like when it's in parallel. So we will run that. So you can see it's ramping down, and then it determines it's a 33 microfarad capacitor. So if I slow down the time base to um, 500, and I do that again, I might be able to get it all in one screen here. So there's the ramp, and it does a little bit after it. And that is pretty much what you get, oh, wrong button. Uh, that's, that's basically what you get with a capacitor. And it doesn't matter what orientation you put it in, you get roughly the same, the same output. Now, I also wanted to test um, that bipolar transistor that I originally had. So we'll put that in as well. And I'll bring the time base back to where it was before. So it's much shorter, uh, it stops much earlier in the test sequence, and it gives us uh, the gain and the forward voltage. The gain is a little bit wrong, uh, it's a little bit off what it was before, um, which of course makes sense given the uh, resistance that's in, uh, in parallel with it. But it can still calculate forward voltage and everything just fine. The, uh, this, this, this was something that kind of intrigued me because, I mean, these are relatively high voltages um, to be applying to a junction 
Um, obviously, I mean, it needs to apply these voltages, but uh, I don't see. T it's hard to it's hard to tell. Uh, unfortunately, it's hard to trigger on this. To try and do a single shot. I'd like to see if it's starting with a with a low voltage, and then ramping up. Unfortunately, I don't have a terribly great scope. <laughs> but you can see, it pretty much immediately starts with uh, the full 5 volts, maybe 2.5 volts here and there. Um, but it's always applying, it seems to be a difference of 5 volts between each pin. So uh, I'm surprised that this is pretty much doing it with just TTL levels. Uh, I, was not, I was not expecting that. And I guess to round this out, I should see what my the the peak equipment does and see if it's following a, a similar test procedure. Now, obviously, that stuff doesn't test the same uh, number of components. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if those waveforms are specifically tailored for whatever they're trying to uh, test. So let me get those, and I'll come back. So here I've just got the uh, the peak uh, DCA 75 connected, uh, same way as before. And uh, this is even more interesting. Uh, now this tests a wide variety of semiconductors, far more than the, uh, the T4 does. But uh, you'll notice I'm now on 5 volts per division, uh, same 250 milliseconds. And uh, watch this waveform. It's far larger and far more complex. Um, in fact, we're reaching voltages here um, that are, you know, 5, 10, uh, 12 volts or so. And that makes sense because, um, sorry, I'm thinking of the other one. Uh, this does run off of a 1.5 volt uh, cell, so they're obviously doing uh, some, some sort of a boost conversion or there's a charge pump in here. But it's, as you can see, it's a far more sophisticated waveform. And it does, it does start out at the very beginning at effectively TTL, and then it jumps up in voltage, um, most likely for testing uh, higher voltage devices. So I was a bit surprised by that. Um, I, I really didn't think it would, it would uh, immediately go to such high voltages, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's that device. And the capacitance meter, I expect... I mean, I would expect it to just put out a, uh, like, a 100 kilohertz frequency, or a 1 kilohertz frequency. Uh, that's what I'd expect, because um, this doesn't really have to detect anything. So I would expect uh, the capacitance meter uh, to be much, much, much simpler. And it is. So, with the capacitance meter, we get small 5-volt uh, pulses again. Um, and the 5 volts I consider to be kind of interesting because this meter is powered by a 12-volt um, 23A cell. Uh, obviously, the micro is running at 5 volts, so that's obviously what they're, they're doing with this. And it's a lot slower uh, than I originally expected, but I believe, uh, actually, now that I think about it, this is most this is most likely just its component monitoring function. What it, you see, it says monitoring for component. So obviously, what it's doing is it's trying to detect when you plug a capacitor in. And if I plug in a capacitor, most likely it will switch to a higher frequency. the amplitude goes way down.
So yeah, um, the waveforms are far more interesting uh, on the semiconductor analyzer and the T4 than I expected. Um, and the fact that they're t all TTL is not something I was expecting. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if anyone knows exactly the algorithm that this uses um, and can uh, sort of decode those waveforms as to what it's actually measuring, um, that would be amazing because uh, I don't know if anyone has posted anything like that online, um, but I'd love to know. So anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Thanks for watching.